Support comes from Mosby Building Arts, a design-build company committed to remodeling the right way. Visit callmosby.com to get project inspiration for any room of your house. Wayne Pratt here. We've been pumping out the gateway every weekday since last May, so we figure it's time to hear from you. Let us know what you like, what you don't like, what you might change about this podcast by filling out a survey. It's online at gateway.show. That's gateway.show. It should take roughly three minutes to complete. And thanks. Now, today's podcast. From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It is Tuesday, March 3rd. I'm Wayne Pratt. Ahead, two-time Olympic champion and East St. Louis native hurdler Don Harper Nelson says dropping athletes from contracts because they have become pregnant can only harm sponsors. If you know someone that is, I say, a killer in their sport, let them have a baby. Let them have a little person that they look into those eyes and say, I'm doing it for the both of us. St. Louis Public Radio's Andrea Henderson speaks with Harper Nelson about sponsorships, motherhood, and the 2020 Olympics. First, the headlines. A Missouri House committee could vote today on legislation reversing new rules governing cash bail in the state. As St. Louis Public Radio's Rachel Littman reports, Republican lawmakers say the changes put people at risk. The new Missouri Supreme Court rules took effect last July. They did not eliminate cash bail entirely, but instead told judges they needed to consider other conditions like pretrial monitoring first. Republican State Representative Justin Hill of Lake St. Louis says he found out about the changes after a man who was released without any conditions went on a shooting rampage at a Kansas City area bar weeks later. He says he was also disturbed that the Supreme Court acted without taking public comment. Our Supreme Court went ahead and implemented legislation that was already filed in the state of Missouri for the last two years and went ahead and made law via rulemaking. A task force made up of prosecutors, defense attorneys and judges took suggestions and offered changes before the rules went into effect. I'm Rachel Lippman, St. Louis Public Radio. Also on tap today in Jefferson City, Governor Mike Parson and members of his cabinet will meet to discuss the state's precautionary measures regarding COVID-19. That's the disease caused by coronavirus. The meeting comes after Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker yesterday downplayed the risk of acquiring the lethal strain. The risk to the general public remains low, but as public officials charged with the safety and welfare of the people of Illinois, we take that risk seriously. Pritzker's comments follow confirmation by state health officials that a fourth person in Illinois has tested positive for the virus. Nearly 300 others are being monitored for possible exposure. The outbreak is prompting students from China attending Missouri University of Science and Technology to raise money to help fight coronavirus in their home country. But they are struggling to get that money into the right hands. Here's St. Louis Public Radio's Jonathan All. Jackie Chen is an electrical engineering major from Wuhan, the city at the center of the coronavirus outbreak. She and her fellow Chinese students raised more than $4,000 in just a few days to buy medical equipment for their home hospital. But Chen says the hospital has turned down the funds. Right now, they don't take any donation from personal, uh, but uh, we are still prepared the money for like the uh, potential outbreak in the U.S. And uh, maybe we will, we will use the money in Rolla too. Chen says the s community has been very supportive. The Chinese Scholars and Students Association is holding a seminar on Wednesday to help educate the campus about the coronavirus. In Rala, I'm Jonathan All, St. Louis Public Radio. In other news, a second dispensary in the Metro East is now selling recreational marijuana. The Green Solution in Sage opened yesterday, nearly seven weeks after receiving a license from Illinois. Joshi Holdings has acquired the operation, and President Eric Moff says the dispensary's name will eventually change to Beyond Hello. The Metro East could see up to six more dispensaries by the end of the year. East St. Louis native Dawn Harper Nelson is a two-time Olympic champion known for her prowess in the 100-meter hurdles. She retired in 2018 to become a mother. Now she's facing a hurdle not uncommon for professional women athletes who come back after pregnancy finding sponsors. 
St. Louis Public Radio's Andrea Henderson recently caught up with Harper Nelson in Belleville, where her coach was prepping her for drills. The last 50, get to the finish line. Just change your tempo. Don't do nothing amazing. Keep your shoulders square. Yep. All right. When I was introduced to track and field, you just constantly heard in your community, you know, that nothing good comes out of East St. Louis. Uh, from the outside, that's what you would hear. But then the adults in my life, especially my coaches, were very, very strict with implementing that that's just a lie um, and that you are worth it, you are good enough, and you can be the difference in that. Knowing the type of sports talent that came out of East St. Louis, how do you think that made you the person that you are now? Well, something that's early on that, um, you know, I fell in love with track really when I did the hurdles um, around eighth grade. And for me, I put the pressure on myself of knowing I'm the next thing since Jackie Joanna Kersey. And I told myself, like, you have to succeed. You are going to be the next name they'll talk about. And so to actually be on top of the podium and win the Olympics, we're just like, oh, my God, I did my job. You know, I'm another name for East St. Louis to say that it really is a city of champions. And so now you say you retired in 2018. Mm -hmm. What was the reason for the retirement? The reason for the retirement was, since I was a child, I always said I wanted three things. I wanted to be an Olympic champion, a wife, and a mom. And the third thing, being a mom for me, I had always envisioned that everything else had to stop. And I was okay at that time saying, I'm willing. I have done so much in track and field. I have reached pretty much all my goals. Now the next thing that's pulling at me is to be someone's mom. And uh, when I got pregnant for a while, you know, I really battled with the idea of, Man, I still kind of like running though. Like I worked out while I was pregnant and the support that I have is the only reason that I'm willing to chase 2020. What are some of the challenges that you have faced so far being a mother, Ooh. a new mother? Um, some of the challenges would have to be more of, um, so two things that just came to mind, obviously the physical. I know my body from being in the best shape of its life, but Having a body that's been off for nine months, even though I did my workouts and stuff, it's still nothing like going to competitions throughout the year, having a season's best. Um, so being patient with my body has been very hard. And then the other thing I did think about, you said some of the harshest, th hardest things coming back. To be honest, a sponsorships is another really big thing. It's been very different, you know, because I've had my sponsor, you know, in the past, and as of right now, I don't. And so that's been a big topic among, you know, athletes in general, especially women, with having babies, having a sponsor before I had my child, I had my child, now I don't. In so other, they dropped you just because you... No, mm -mm, I, no, they did not in that, in my particular situation. No, they did not, because I did announce that I was going to retire, right? Um, but I was running well, and they were like, we support you before, yay. And so now that I'm saying that I'm coming back, uh, the discussion has been more of, we kind of need you to prove to us in track and field, like I said, across uh, sports in general, but I remember particularly in track and field, we've had the discussion, but there have been a number of athletes that have been dropped because of they got pregnant. So, um, you know, I'm just really hoping that, you know, now that I am home, people will want to support me in this journey. Yeah. So many people believe that women athletes, um, they can't compete at the same level once they have, mm -hmm. you know, a baby. They just kind of see it as if, oh, you're done. Mm -hmm. What do you say to those people who think that way? You can just drop names like Serena, um, you know what I mean? Candace Parker, excuse me. Uh, you know, there are just some athletes that I think you almost do yourself a disservice to count us out. Not almost, you do yourself a disservice. Uh, if you know someone that is, I say, a killer in their sport, let them have a baby. You know, let them have an extra motivation. Why is the race toward the 2020 Olympics important to you? Ooh, it's important because I've had a love for running since, like I said, about 12 years to 13 years old. And it's given me the world, literally. I have been blessed with the gift of running and hurdling. And one thing I've always said is I never want to take my gift for granted. And even at this age of 35 and having my daughter, I know that when that gun goes off, I have what it takes to be on top of that podium. That was reporter Andrea Henderson speaking with Don Harper Nelson in a locker room at Belleville West High School. Our Holly Edgel edited that report. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio, music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. 
I'm Wayne Pratt. I'll be gone for the next few days. A plethora of people will be behind this microphone while I am out. From the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this has been The Gateway. Support comes from Mosby Building Arts, a design-build company committed to remodeling the right way. Visit callmosby.com to get project inspiration for any room of your house.